following these tips, I can almost guarantee that you're gonna go ahead and beat whatever showdown you were struggling at. We do not have an active draft, but the first thing I have to let you all know is that whenever you see a player that is supercharged as you will see currently due to the promotion on opening day, you want to pick up those supercharged players over anyone. In particular to the Team Affinity Showdown, each one of these games is a boss game, so if you lose, you have to restart. Therefore, inside of your managed squad, you should have all your best hitters available playing at out of position if you need to in order to ensure that each bat is a worthy bat. But before we even go into managed squad, you want to make sure that you activate whichever perks are going to be active at all times or benefit you the most in terms of your playstyle. The best perk all around for you to use is going to be hero time. You want the gold, you want the diamond, and if you can also get lucky enough to get the silver you want the silver one as well why because since each one of these games are a boss game it is always in the ninth inning therefore hero time is going to be active no matter what and it is an exit velo boost which is very beneficial other times the second best perk is going to be to wait until two strikes with down but not out as it also gives you significant exit velo boost there will be times although that you do not want to score with a runner on third base and boosts like rally time are the reasons why because you do not want to tie up the ball game instead you'd rather keep that runner at third base so the hitter continues to get the boost from you guys losing now if you have not noticed after you beat one of these mini bosses it gives you a draft you don't have to draft right at that moment you can always press circle and back out and then go to the next mini boss and see who it is you're facing in terms of right-handed or left-handed pitcher and then resume the draft and inside that draft it will allow you to pick the next player a little better as well as picks the pick the next perk a little better as as well. In addition, it might be tedious, but before each and every single boss, if you need to, you want to rebuild not only your squad's lineup, but you also want to rebuild the perks to make sure they are all effective. For example, if you are entering a game where it is tied, then rally time as a perk is no bueno. So you would rather have down but not out or any other perk rather than rally time because there will never be a chance where you are trailing inside that mini boss. We will not have any gameplay in this video it's just gonna be strict tips and guides but the most important tip is do not play with pride that means if you have a runner on first base and there are 10 outs remaining I don't give a damn if it's Juan Soto I don't give a damn if it's John Carlos Stanton the 97 overalls of those cards bunt the runner over because the CPU has a strange way of humbling you and no matter how you hit the ball ending up into a double play. In all of these moments, your leadoff hitter is going to be your first hitter. Therefore, situational, if there is a runner on first base, when you are entering the moment, you might want to put your best bunter to be the leadoff hitter. For example, I have D Strange Gordon, and I have him because of his bunting and drag bunting ability. Whenever I had a mini boss where we started with a runner on first base, I made sure that D Strange Gordon, even with runners on the corners, I made sure that D Strange Gordon was my first hitter so he could be the leadoff hitter and he could bunt over the runner on first to second base that way I would have two runners in scoring position also in scenarios where you have runners on third and first base is loaded just a runner on second base just a runner on first it is always going to be your eighth hitter that is going to be the only base runner if there's only one base runner so you usually want to put one of the fastest hitters if we weren't at the final boss moment I would probably have D Strange Gordon here but since he is my best bunter I will look at who has the second most speed out of all my hitters and then put the second most speed to hit eighth only time I do not put the second most speed to hit eighth is when they're a very good car like Cedric Mullins so I'm looking for anybody under a 97 92 overall to be that eighth hitter so they can be that runner whenever there are runners on base as there are more runners on base let's say base is loaded it goes ahead and puts the lead runner as the sixth hitter, the second runner as the seventh hitter, and then the runner on first as the eighth hitter. My last piece of advice before we enter into each division and talk about the mini bosses is going to be if you are not a great hitter in MLB The Show, and it is a pitcher that has a funky delivery, they don't even need to have a funky delivery. Just wait until you have two strikes. 
once you have two strikes, become a hitter and look to fight off pitches that you cannot crush. That's why this perk, down but not out, is such a significant perk because it increases the exit velo boost by a mile. Before we dive into the specifics, make sure you guys go ahead and hit that like button, or subscribe button, notification bell, aiming for 25,000 subscribers before April 16th, my birthday. Also, check out the description. We have our Twitch, we stream daily, Discord, MLB The Show community, social media links is where we post our updates and how to become a member if you want to support me financially. Starting with the East, it might not always always be the same picture or it might not always be in the same order but I want to go ahead and help you out with whichever moment it is that you have in front of you so showdown versus Barnes that is going to be a right-handed pitcher you are going to be tied there are not going to be any runners on base the leadoff hitter is always going to be hitting so since it's a right-handed pitcher get power versus right and get lefties to go ahead and start the lineup off for you now despite all that remember how important clutch is as an attribute this year it dictates your contact so if a player does not have good clutch you usually want to either lead them off or put them at the bottom of the lineup the second mini boss moment is against ken jouse you are going to have the bases loaded you're gonna be down two at third base will be your sixth hitter at second base your seventh and at first base will be your eighth hitter your leadoff hitter is always going to be the first batter if you have someone that is a great bunter a big tip when it comes to bunting is if you point the analog stick towards the right it is going to bunt towards the right or do its best if you point it to the middle it is going to bunt towards the middle if you point it to the left it will bunt towards the left you will always want to bunt towards the right that way you move the runners over with the bases loaded I'd rather you put the best bunter on your team to lead off for this moment and bunt the runners over try to do a squeeze don't send the runners to steal just try to squeeze in a run because I'd rather you have a run scored with runners on second and third and one out or nine outs left rather than you have a double play have a runner on third down one with nine outs left it's a completely different scenario he had tom glavin right after that left-handed pitcher there's going to be a runner on second base you are down one the eighth hitter is going to be the runner on second base if you have rally time you're gonna keep that eighth hitter at third base until you go ahead and get whoever is hitting to second base whenever you get that second runner into scoring position then you can go ahead and score with the player that way rally time is no longer active Jason Chris Sale we entered that moment tied we needed to take the lead the leadoff hitter was the first hitter Chris Sale is very very wild inside of the game and also he has a funky delivery so he's hard to read at times you're gonna want to wait until you have two strikes once you have two strikes you become a hitter Hopefully you get walked a ton of times, and if you do get walked, do not be afraid to bunt that runner over to second base, and then over to third, and then either become a hitter or try to squeeze it in. Noah was up next, right-handed pitcher. We were down one, the leadoff hitter. There were no runners on base, same thing. Wait until two strikes. Because he's a right-handed pitcher, you wanna make sure you load up power versus right and lefty hitters. Then we had McClanahan. We had a runner on first base trailing by one leadoff hitter once again eighth hitter was the runner on first base i made sure that d strange gordon moved the runner over to second base and then after that i became a hitter d strange gordon is such a good bunter and drag bunter as well that he was actually able to make it safely to first so now i had runners on first and second with the second hitter i bunted them over into scoring position and now i had nine outs left to drive in those two runs the final one was versus Gray, another right-handed pitcher. We were down two with runners on first and third. The eighth hitter was the first base runner. The seventh hitter was the third base runner. I went ahead and once again with D Strange Gordon, bunted the runner on first over to second base and then it was much easier to drive in those two runs with a single let's say for example then moving the runner on first over to second base with another bunt and then trying to drive them in it made it a whole lot easier and you end up facing sandy alcantara down three now rally time would become good again but i would rather you use 
hero time all three perks are down but not out if you are going to be waiting for two strikes and obviously you want to load this up power versus right as well as lefty hitters versus the central the first one we faced was Bly Levin. he is a right-handed pitcher we were down two with a runner on third it was the eighth hitter we did not need to bunt since we had a runner on third and we had plenty of outs instead i became a hitter and i tried my best to hit a single then move the runner over to second base and then tried to hit another single and rinse and repeat island is another right-handed pitcher it's a tie game with a runner on second base we need to take the lead before recording six outs so why wouldn't you bunt to the right hand side move that runner over to third and now you have five outs to try to put a ball in play and drive in that run worst comes to worst you bunt in the run as well scherzer was up next right-handed pitcher we were down two with runners on first and third you guys should already know eighth is the first base runner seventh is the third base runner we made sure to bunt over the runner on first to second base now we have two runners in scoring position hit a single get walked whatever it is we go ahead and drive in those runs and keep on repeating the process i'm telling you bunting is one of the most effective things to do versus the cpu that granky another right-handed pitcher we were down one with a runner on second base who was the eighth hitter we didn't need to move the runner over at all so we just went in there looking to be hitters and if we got ourselves a double we would move that runner over and then just try to drive him in liam hendrix was up next right-handed pitcher we were tied obviously prioritize whenever you hear me say right-handed or left-handed pitcher i'm telling you prioritize either power versus right or have lefties hitting your best lefties starting it off and making sure that the one with the worst clutch is the leadoff hitter so we just went ahead got a base hit moved the runners over and made sure just like the holland moment without a runner on base to start it off that we moved the runner over and then drove them in this is going to be a little bit more difficult so it is crucial that you have your best contact hitter to lead off that is not great with clutch showdown versus burns it was a little bit easier we had more outs to work with having 10 outs right-handed pitcher you're tied in there make sure power versus right as well as a player that does not have great clutch is leading it off and then move that runner over and score that run mckenzie was the final one before the final boss lead off hitter you're down one he is a right-handed pitcher get a runner on base move him over hopefully you still have enough outs to move him over and if you have rally time as a perk keep him on third base until you get another runner on base and then move that runner into scoring position last but not least we have the west and the west is a little bit trickier to go ahead and draft players from because they have a lot of moments or at least for me where i had to face a left-handed pitcher we started it off by facing herman marquez we were tied right-handed pitcher and we had eight outs so as soon as we got a runner on base we were moving him over looking to put him into scoring position instantly then we had blake snell blake snell left-handed pitcher this was probably one of the more difficult ones that we had to do the bases were loaded we were down four at first base was our eighth hitter second base was our seventh and then third base was our sixth hitter you can go ahead and put your best bunter to lead it off in order to try to squeeze in a run as i've said previously unfortunately i did not take my own advice that's why i tell you do not play with pride instead i hit and i grounded into a double play scored one had a runner on third and then i had all that pressure on me for 19 outs to go ahead and score at least four more runs to win this moment colors jr right-handed pitcher you're down one with the runner on third that is gonna be your eighth hitter you are looking to hit you don't have to bunt that runner in and then you face otani otani same thing tied game right-handed pitcher he is wild so take pitches wait until two strikes and then go ahead and move them runners over we had after that paul seawold right-handed pitcher down one runner on first eighth hitter made sure he was speedy bunted the runner over i don't know what happened inside the game but they had a horrible animation at first and we were able to beat it out now we have runners on first and second bunted them over now runners on second and third simple base hit drove both of them in kershaw left handed pitcher so now you want right-handed hitters early in the lineup 
power versus left is prioritized. You're down two with the runner on third base. You're a hitter. Get a base hit, move that runner over to second base, and then move him to third base. Get another base hit, and then rinse and repeat the process until you score three. Last but not least, we had Daniel Bard, right-handed pitcher. We were down two with the runner on second base, and our eighth hitter was that runner. We went ahead and just became hitters because it isn't a priority to move the runner over to third base. Why? Because you are down two instead of being down one or tie game. So instead, become a hitter, look to hit a single, keep the runner on third base if you have rally time, and after you do that, that's when you will want to go ahead and bunt over the runner from first base to second base and have runners in second and third to tie the ball game up for you. With that, you will be able to face each and every single showdown boss at a three run deficit and same thing practice the two strike approach and bunt whenever it is necessary to move the runners over you have 20 outs so bunting and sacrificing a out in order to move the runners over is going to be a lot more beneficial than you think if you did end up enjoying today's content please make sure to hit that like button subscribe button notification bell we're aiming for 25,000 subscribers before the 16th of april which is my birthday let's go ahead and hit that mark inside the description you got the twitch we stream daily the discord where we have our own MLB The Show community, social media links. Make sure you guys go ahead and follow them all for updates and more, and then how to become a member to support me financially if you would like to. Have a blessed day and night. Stay positive, stay safe, stay blessed, and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out.